One of, one of my interests has been, and you've probably seen my video on my years in India with Sai Baba, um, and, but since then a lot has happened, and I had a major sort of wake up in India, a, a giant one, a huge one, uh, in which my whole worldview shifted, and, and everything I thought was real kind of wasn't. It's very much like the movie The Matrix. Um, the wake up I had was extensive and my whole worldview changed and I realized, you know, what had seemed reality really wasn't. A really good example of that. And and in this talk we're talking about the New World Order. And that's when that, that word was used by George Bush's father in his thousand points of light speech. You're going to hear people talk about the New World Order more and more. Barack Obama has extensively. A lot of the big heavies that we see in the media drop it now and then. What's going on? What we also see, and we're now talking about the wake up, is the incredible downsizing of America, the national debt, the loss of freedom, police state stuff. So I'm going to make sense of some of this. It was part of my wake up. Part of my wake up was when I returned to India to get my book published and you saw that book in the last video. And suddenly I'm staying with a friend and I find this small sort of low edition, lousily published book by an Australian and he did it in Hyderabad and it was about the mystery of what's going on. It had a bad title, but within it was just mind-blowing stuff. And in, in my awakened state, the interconnection of global banking to create a world state blew my head off. I knew it was real. He even had the interconnected banking merchant bankers behind the Federal Reserve in a chart. We'll go into them later. Let's back up. You know, if there is an agenda going on, I believe there is, it serves the purpose of the agenda to have most people absolutely sleeping through it. They don't want people to wake up. So let's kind of back into this in a different way. Let's go back to the matrix. Pretty, The first one was very powerful and in there Neo, the hero, wakes up to what's really going on. We take for granted with him the normal workaday world. People strolling through busy streets, reminds you of Manhattan, cafes, eating at restaurants, hanging out, life as usual, going home, all of it's a lie. When Neo wakes up out of this, he sees all this stuff is really digital bits, something fed into him. His really traumatic wake up, and he had some help in doing this, people had already woken up, was when he pulls this cord out of the back of his head, he's in a fake uterus, sits up and looks out at this field, millions of people hooked up to the same thing, providing energy to what's really ruling the world. And in this science fiction, it's a massive computer. There have been three or four world wars. The human race has has lost it. It's kind of like the Terminator series, but taking, taking it further. At this point, all the humans are vassals. They're kept subjects under these powerful interlocking computers who hold the human race in utter, utter hostility. At this point, Neo, played by Keanu Reeves, his mind is completely blind. But what he learns, he's, he can use to navigate in this cyber world where, where everyone's caught. And so that is really the theme of the traumatic wake up. That at great expense, these network mega computers had created a seamless reality that seemed real. 
And so the bottom line is that everyone believes the illusion, okay? Pretty powerful stuff. Um, and he ends up, of course, being a minority of a minority. I mean, a fractional, fractional number of people really have woken up in the matrix. And a great example for maybe what's going on with the New World Order and people waking up. Another example is a stage magician. I often think of this. Um, recently, it had been a weird event, but what, what happens with a stage magician is they'll have the whole audience in their hands like putty, except maybe two or three people. Big audience. Everyone falls under. You see him give them the hypnotic pre-subject, subjective. He walks them through hypnotic subject. Um, let me re-put that. The hypnotist on stage knows how to program the people. He starts them out with their concentration on something. It might be a dot on a screen. It might be something else. He gives them hypnotic suggestions through this. And all of a sudden, they're all under. I mean, before you know it, all but maybe three believe they're on a jet for a tour to Thailand or Africa, you name the place. He, he tells them to fill in the details. He gives them a post-hypnotic suggestion, and when he wakes them up, they all believe they actually took the tour to Africa or Thailand or wherever. The three that didn't go under are looking around amazed that everyone absolutely believes it. This is a reality about human consciousness that we need to be aware of. Um, a really powerful example of this is someone I think is probably the most brilliant cinematic genius, maybe of all time. Uh, his name is Stanley Kubrick. He passed away on the film that we're going to talk about. Here's a guy with incredible range who saw outside the box. He was decades, way before his time. He did a movie called 2001, way before 2001, about some pretty powerful stuff. He did Clockwork Orange, another futuristic world of where they need to control human behavior, way before its time. His last film really lets the cat out of the bag. It's called Eyes Wide Shut. And he actually died within the week or so of the film being finished. Now, if you haven't seen Eyes Wide Shut, most people miss the point of the film. It's not about sex. It's not about hedonism. He's pulling the veil way back, and he says to the poor public that does not know what's going on, Behold, gaze upon your rulers. These are the ones who really control the world. Not your elected politicians or talking heads. Not the anchors on television, talking heads. Not the, the paid and bought for movie stars or media people or frankly academics or, or otherwise people that are bought off. They're never going to tell you what's going on. In Eyes Wide Shut, we're taken. Tom Cruise, it's interesting, plays the main role. It's just the, the last thing he did um, where his marriage broke up. And you see him as a very ambitious MD. And, and it reads very true to a lot of people who want to go up the ranks, who want to go up the elevator success. They, they, they're very willing to sell out. And so basically he runs into an old college friend who plays the piano for the elite of the elite of the elite. And he finds out the password to get in and he goes off and gets everything he needs to go to the great ballroom. The Great Estate. And your images of Rockefeller come to mind. And these are the inner circle, the most powerful people on earth, we're told. So basically, Cruz is wearing a mask. He wanders in there. 
And this is really Kubrick's message. 